Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to talk about intermolecular forces or IMFs for short. So what are intermolecular forces and how do they work? If you remember from an earlier video, we talked about intramolecular forces. And if we were looking at a water molecule, H2O, and we were focusing our attention on the polar covalent bonds here that exist between the hydrogen and oxygen here, then we would be talking about intramolecular forces. Intramolecular forces are the chemical bonds that hold atoms together in a molecular compound. For example, ionic bonds, polar covalent bonds, and nonpolar covalent bonds are all types of intramolecular forces. But what are intermolecular forces, or IMFs for short? Well, let's suppose we have another water molecule next to this existing water molecule. All right, from uh, the last video, we learned that this end of the water molecule has a partial positive charge and that this end of the water molecule or the oxygen end is going to have a partial uh, negative charge. So what ends up happening is when you get two water molecules next to each other, this partial negative and this partial, partial positive are going to attract each other. All right, They're not going to chemically bond to one another, but there's going to be a force of attraction that, that holds these... Uh, water molecules together and if you've ever done that experiment in third or fourth grade where you drop a bunch of droplets of water on the face or surface of a penny and count how many you can get on there that's because of the hydrogen bonding that occurs between these two water molecules hydrogen bonding is a type of intermolecular force the forces of attraction uh, or repulsion for that matter that exist between neighboring particles and that's what we're looking at today all right so keep this in mind intermolecular forces are between neighboring particles, whereas intramolecular forces occur within the molecule itself. All right, so here we go. Let's see what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about hydrogen bonding, which is one type of IMF. We're going to talk about London dispersion forces, which is another type of IMF. We're going to talk about dipole, dipole attraction, a third type of IMF. We're not going to really talk about Van der Waals forces, but uh, these are the three most common types of intermolecular forces. So why are intermolecular forces important? Well, first of all, they have an effect on the boiling points of a substance. If you think about it, if I want to uh, separate these and get them further away from each other and turn them into water vapor, right, I'm going to have to uh, put some energy into this system here to get these guys to move further away from each other and break the intermolecular force that exists between them. Okay, so intermolecular forces have a lot to do with the boiling points of different substances. Another thing you should know is that intermolecular forces are much weaker than intramolecular forces. The hydrogen bonding that occurs right here, which we'll talk about in a, a, a slide, uh, a couple slides from now, is going to be uh, much weaker than the actual chemical bond that takes place uh, between the hydrogen and oxygen within this molecule. Okay, so IMFs, intermolecular forces, are much weaker than uh, chemical bonds or intramolecular forces. All right, and lastly, it says right here, the stronger the intermolecular force, the more kinetic energy it's going to require to move those particles uh, away from one another. Okay, so with hydrogen bonding, which is a fairly strong intermolecular force, it's going to take a lot of energy to, uh, to move these away from each other and to vaporize water. And we'll take a look at that in a few moments. But let's first talk about our first intermolecular force, London dispersion forces. So what are London dispersion forces and how do they work? Well, it says right here, London dispersion forces are a temporary attractive force that results when the electrons in two adjacent atoms occupy positions that make the atoms form temporary dipoles. Okay, and they occur between all atoms or molecules. They're temporary and they're very weak. So let's suppose we have an atom right here and at the center we have the nucleus. And uh, we tend to think that the electrons surround the nucleus symmetrically. But that's not what happens. Occasionally there becomes times where these three electrons might go to one end of this atom. When that happens, what you have is a partial negative charge on one side of that atom and a partial positive charge on the other side since these electrons are negative. So when you have unsymmetrical electron distribution, you're going to have one side that's partially negative, one side that's partially positive. And when you get one of these atoms up against one of these atoms, what ends up happening is these electrons here are going to force these three electrons to the opposite end of the atom here since electrons are negative and they repel each other. And what you'll have is something that looks like this. Okay, So 
these electrons are going to repel these electrons to the opposite side of this atom here, creating a partially negative charge on this side of the atom and a partially positive charge on this side of the atom. And what ends up happening when you have negatives and positives, they attract each other. Now this is very temporary because what happens is that these electrons and these electrons will move around the atom and they won't stay here for very long. All right, so the intermolecular force that occurs that should be an arrow. The intermolecular force that takes place, or the force of attraction that takes place here, is very weak, but there is, in fact, a force of attraction, and that is called a London dispersion force. Okay, so all atoms, all molecules, they all have London dispersion forces. They're very temporary and they're very weak, and this is the weakest of the three uh, intermolecular forces we're going to talk about. Let's take a look at the next one, dipole-dipole attraction. Okay, dipole-dipole attraction. This is going to be the second weakest uh, uh, IMF that we're going to talk about today. And dipole-dipole attraction is an intermolecular force that exists between neighbor, neighboring polar covalent molecules. So in an earlier video, we talked about polar covalent molecules like hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride is polar covalent. This bond right here is going to be a polar covalent bond. First of all, because this is a nonmetal and this is a nonmetal, making it covalent. But then also, if we take a look at the electronegativities, we see hydrogen is 2.1 and we see this is 3.0. And when we subtract these and take the absolute value, we'll get an electronegativity difference of 0 0.9. And you can take a look at a chart, and that will tell you that this makes this polar covalent. So what does that mean? Well, that means that one end of this molecule here uh, is sharing or has uh, the electrons most of the time, thus creating a partially negative charge. And over here, we have a slightly positive charge. So we'll go ahead and just show the direction that those electrons are hanging out in with a little arrow with a little plus sign right here going to the, the negative end. All right, so this is called a dipole. This is called a dipole right here. All right, and what ends up happening when you get two polar covalent molecules next door to one another is you can see right here this has a partially positive charge this has a partially negative charge and this right here will also have a dipole going this way and what ends up happening is that positives and negatives are going to attract one another and the result is called a dipole dipole attraction all right so there's a force of attraction that occurs between these two polar covalent molecules and that force of attraction is called a dipole dipole attraction. Okay, so the IMF that's taking place here is called a dipole-dipole attraction. All right, so that's the second type, and this is the second weakest of the three that we're going to talk about today. Let's take a look at a third one called hydrogen bonding. All right, hydrogen bonding. This is going to be the strongest IMF that we're going to talk about in this video. And hydrogen bonding, it says right here that hydrogen bonding is basically going to be the same thing as a dipole-dipole attraction only stronger and it occurs whenever you have polar covalent molecules that have hydrogen bonded to either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So whenever you have molecules that are bonded to hydrogen, nitrogen, I'm sorry, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, uh, you will have hydrogen bonding. And bonding is kind of a misnomer. There is no bonding that's taking place here. That's just what it's called. It's an intermolecular force. So there are no chemical bonds, but it's a fairly strong uh, intermolecular force. So if we take a look right here, we have a water molecule, and water we know is polar, right? We have one end of it being slightly or partially positive, and the other end being partially uh, negative. So if you take a look over here, if we have a bunch of water molecules together, right, there's all kinds of intermolecular forces taking place. The partially positive end right here is, is attracted to the partially negative end of, say, this water molecule, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all these little dashed lines represent the, uh, the intermolecular forces that are taking place, okay? So because we have hydrogen here bonded to this oxygen here, and that's one of the rules for hydrogen bonding, then what the intermolecular force that is taking place between these two molecules right here is going to be hydrogen bonding, or H bonding for short. Okay, so this same thing would play out if you had a bunch of HF molecules, hydrogen fluorides floating around, right? If you had a bunch of hydrogen fluoride molecules floating around, 
because you have hydrogen bonded to fluorine here and hydrogen bonded to fluorine here, this side of this molecule is going to be slightly negative. And the other side is going to be slightly positive. And same thing right here. This will be slightly positive. This will be slightly or partially negative. And so there's going to be an intermolecular force that takes place between these two oppositely charged uh, atoms in this molecule. And what is this intermolecular force going to be? Well, this is going to be hydrogen bonding. Okay, so hydrogen bonding is essentially the same thing as dipole dipole attraction. It's just a little bit stronger. It occurs between hydrogen and nitrogen, hydrogen and oxygen, and hydrogen and fluorine. And these guys are typically going to have higher boiling points since it's going to require more energy to separate them because the intermolecular force is stronger. All right, so those are the three types of intermolecular forces. And let's just take a look at one example, kind of tying everything together. All right, so let's take a look at intramolecular versus intermolecular forces. And it says right here that intramolecular forces tend to be much stronger than intermolecular forces. So chemical bonds, or the bonds that occur within atoms, or I'm sorry, within molecules, tend to be a lot stronger than intermolecular forces or the forces that exist between molecules or atoms. And to demonstrate this, it says here that we can compare the vaporization of one mole of water, right? If we're talking about vaporization, that's a change in state of matter. We're not breaking chemical bonds. We're just moving them away from one another. And so that is going to deal with intermolecular forces. And we're going to compare this to something like electrolysis, where we actually break the hydrogen to oxygen bond. And what we see here, if we take a look, is that it takes 41 kilojoules, it takes 41 kilojoules here of energy to vaporize one mole of water. So to turn one mole of water to a gas, it requires 41 kilojoules to move these water molecules further away from one another, right? Because the intermolecular forces that exist between these two, it's going to take 41 kilojoules to move them further away and turn into the gaseous stage. But if we take a look here, it takes almost 23 times more energy to convert or to change liquid water and break the chemical bonds, to break these hydrogen to oxygen bonds, to break those guys and to, to produce hydrogen gas right here. This would be, hyd or I'm sorry, this would be oxygen gas and this would be your hydrogen gas. All right, so we're creating two new substances. We're actually breaking the chemical bonds here. We're breaking the intramolecular forces. And it takes, if you take a look here, about 23 times more energy to break the intramolecular forces of one mole of water compared to just simply moving them and breaking the intermolecular forces and moving them further away. It only takes 41 kilojoules. All right, so that's intermolecular forces in a nutshell. Those are London dispersion forces, the weakest. We have dipole, dipole attraction, uh, the next weakest. And hydrogen bonding is going to be your strongest uh, intermolecular force. And I hope this was helpful.